And welcome back everyone to episode number three of the Dallas Stars B and GM mode and we are back after a pretty good trade. Uh, we got Henrik Sedin in for pretty much nothing. We got rid of a goaltender and we actually brought in Jakob Markstrom which helped us. We got rid of Niemi and we brought in Markstrom. So now we're running a uh, Luongo Markstrom tandem which ironically they were traded for each other but now they're on the same team. We also brought in Henrik Sedin to center the top line here. I'll be interested to see kind of how things work out, but I think overall it is going to be good. Uh, we move Patrick Sharp down the line, and I think the balance of this roster is pretty strong. We got some good shooters. Uh, we got some good defenders. Hemsky's on the fourth line now, which is interesting. We'll see how he responds to that. I don't know if it'll be good, but overall, you know, we're still pretty good. Our defense is a little bit on the weaker end, so maybe we should just you know, be a little bit more open to defenseman trades. So I think we're gonna go ahead and edit our own trading block and uh, adjust kind of what we're looking for here. And so, um, I don't want to offer a Ponka. I don't mind offering a Ollie. I don't think he's gonna really turn out well for us. Um, I think overall, you know, we want uh, probably, you know, just younger guys who have good potential, so. Uh, even again with forwards uh, same thing younger guys with potential so we'll just decrease the age range back down to like 30 and same thing with defensemen or let's go with a good goalie we want a good goalie prospect because um, you know a guy who's just a pure pure prospect so uh, there we go so we should be good we're just kind of covering all our bases and stuff and hey if a team offers us a first round pick or a second round pick or something we'll be fine with that so overall i think we're pretty good i like where we're standing and yeah um i think it's just time to go ahead and sim a little bit and see where we finish up again the only other guy that i think i would trade is alish hemsky at this moment but um even then i'm not too worried about there so let's go ahead and let's sim forward two weeks again we are leading the league which is nice we'll see if Henrik Sedin makes an impact he should in a positive manner um, again we're probably gonna have a little bit of a loss in chemistry for a few games so uh, there we go we're back on the winning streak I mean only one of those games was lost in regulation which is fine um, that's a big loss to one of the league worst teams in the Bruins so uh, we'll have to figure out where we stand though 6-1 is a pretty good win over one of the better teams in the league uh, the Texans stars are doing well too. Quietly, quietly we're doing well in both sides. Sagan's already point per game player for the entire year. That is terrific out of him. What's our central division looking like? So, uh, Winnipeg's probably going to pass us soon. Uh, entire league, we're probably at the top. No, we're just behind Ottawa, who's made a big splash this year. So, uh, overall, looking at a playoff picture here, uh, the next closest team would be Minnesota. And... All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chicago is actually not going to make the playoffs because there's too many teams behind them in the standings. Um, so Chicago is actually the most threatening team to us, technically. Um, so let's see. So 67 points in 62 games. Uh, it's actually Minnesota. So. We got a good size lead on them. We shouldn't be too worried. We're 13 points up. Uh, relatively same amount of games played. We're in good shoes. We're probably going to get a 100 point score this year, which is terrific. Um, hopefully Henrik Sedin, you know, he comes in and comes in about second on our team in scoring. So we'll see how things work out. But Sagan's working on a 50 goal year, 50 assist year. That is hashtag elite. Um, yeah, not really much to be sad about. So we'll just kind of sim forward a little bit. Uh, or let's, let's check to see if there's been any trades that have sh uh, gone down. So, um, could be close here. No, just the last trade was actually just us. So, uh, nothing, nothing big happening yet. Uh, let's sim forward a couple days here and we'll just kind of see where we sit um, after that. So big win again against uh, the Winnipeg Jets is we got the extra point on them which is huge uh, let's just see if there's anything shaken down in the trade block here and I don't think there will be but who knows so hack it um, no one really major yet again 
I want to add some defensive depth, but I just don't think there's a good option for us right now. Uh, you know, Ham Hughes would be the best, but I think the asking price is just going to be a little bit too high. So, I, I think we'll have to say no to that for now. Um, you know, no one really made you on that trade block yet. And so we're going to go ahead and let's sim right up to the day before the trade deadline here. Again, this is just kind of looking for late ads. I don't think we're going to find any. Um, so, so far so good. Let's sim forward one more day and see if we get any trade offers. So, Gerby for nothing. Uh, I will decline that. I miss the good old days of the Blackberries, man. Those, those are pretty fun. Those trade deadlines were fun. Uh, hopefully they bring that back soon, but uh, let's see if there's anything else happening in the uh, player and pick trading. So Quincy got traded, Ham Hughes and Press for a first thrower and Audette. Um, that's a good trade for Montreal, actually. I mean, Vancouver's getting a first round pick for a rental and getting rid of Brandon Pross. So a uh, guy who's in the age, like if you look at it from a current day perspective, that would be, you know, an equal, a little bit of an equal trade, probably fairly even. So let's go ahead and let's see if there's anything else shaken down here. I don't think we're going to see many people up on the trade block that weren't already up. Uh, Darren Helm's an interesting guy. Uh, outside of them, Gilbert might be a good add. He's just a good depth defenseman. Um, we can look at Gilbert, see what he's going to bring to us, but overall I think we're fairly solid. So, um, just see if there's any upset players, and if there are upset players, see where they are. Uh, Ricardo Kell, you know, he'd be a good fit. He's not super happy. He'd be a good fit in the team. Uh, where, who would we swap for him? Like, we want to get an even swap, I'd say. You know, someone like, uh, uh, uh maybe like Patrick Eves for him, but I don't really want to get rid of Patrick Eves. He's going to be good sandpaper in the playoffs. Um, Yanmark, again, I I think I'd take Yanmark. Yeah, I'd take Yanmark over Raquel because we'd have to add. So, uh, again, no one really worth trading for there. Uh, the other way around, no one there. Boston might have a few bad morales. Nope, no one's really upset there. Buffalo probably has a couple. Yeah, they're just not doing well. Pissick, uh, 24. You know, he's a good top six defender. Um, if we're looking to add someone, let's see if we have anyone matching their kind of block right here. So we could trade away Hayden. Um, probably not going to sign him. Or just Alexiak straight up for him. So what we're doing is we're trading a guy who is overall uh, a little bit overall better, but um, or overall worse, but a year younger and less likely to reach his potential. Uh, we get an extra year out of Pissick. See if they go for this. Um, no, they don't go for that. That's you know a fairly interesting trade to me. Uh, maybe we got a guy like San Vito just to kind of like up it a little bit. So. All right, so we got Pissick in for Alexiak. That is fine by me. Um, that's a good. That's just one of those good little like late season tools that is just gonna be a nice piece for the franchise. And again, it's just kind of you know like tweaking the roster over and over again to make sure we're having the youth come up. And again, just overall the depth is gonna be really big. I think bringing in that defensive depth is pretty solid. Everyone seems to be pretty happy, which is nice. Uh, Brad Richards is upset. We're not going to go after him. Uh, anyone on Edmonton? No one really worth going after right now. Again, just the more depth we have, the better. Uh, LA. Who does LA have? Uh, Luke Shen, Jamie McBain. No one really major. Uh, does uh, no one from mini uh, Gilbert was a guy I liked and so was uh, Jolson Jolson's no longer on their like uh, trading block which is interesting I guess because they realize they're out of the playoff race so that's always intriguing um, no one in New Jersey what about Nashville what's the situation like in Nashville again no one there uh, duh, 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 duh. no one super upset here no, I 
think we're I think we're all right. I think we're all right right now. So, um, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with the way the franchise is. We got a good defensive depth add. Um, we have good offense, and you know, overall, as much as I like to get rid of Goligosky for someone a little bit better uh, and sell high on him, I think we're all right, and. I don't think it warrants like any immediate changes to the team. Um, I think just getting rid of an um, Alexiak. He's in the final year of his contract, and we're getting Pissick in for a guy we're not going to sign again. So overall, I think that's just a good value trade for us. And getting in good val val value trades is always a good thing for a franchise. So Winnipeg's got no one worth going after in Washington. Kind of confirms this so i think that's all we're gonna do trade wise so i like where the team sits i think we're in good shoes and all right so uh let's go ahead and let's edit the lines a little bit here and so we got uh Pissick with a so he's a two-way defender which is even nicer because we're gonna make sure we have some good depth overall yeah, this is just this is just solid. Uh, there's really no way that you can argue with this lineup, and I think moving forward, you know, the franchise is in is in good shape because we got a little bit we got older but better in a sense, and a little bit more forward. So we we re, we pretty much swapped a player who's worse for a player who's who's better and younger, and with a year more under their contract. So that's always a good good thing for us. So let's see if we can capitalize on this. Sagan with the goal early on. Sadine with the goal. We're gonna finish up with the Nachushkin goal. Let's see what the waste stats were this game. See who delivered for us. And it's gonna be like the typical Sagan Ben. Yep, yeah, they all did well. Uh, I want to see how Pizik did. So in 13 minutes of action for us, he's you know plus one, one shot. Just, just solid. Just solid overall. And he gained more alpha being dressed. So you know what? This could be this could be a pretty solid transaction for the team. And so let's go ahead and. Let's just get to the trade deadline here. So, uh, up to the tenth here. I'm looking forward to when we clinch because it's gonna be pretty soon here. Nice. Uh, again, I, I, this team's done really well. Uh, we've got a lot of loser points, which is, which isn't the best, but hey, I uh, can't really complain too much. Uh, three weeks for SHL four is always a good option here. And lost it. Let's go to play morale. Let's see what we got for morale wise. Jordy Ben's not gonna be super happy for being scratched, but you know what? Um, uh, da, da. All right. Uh, nothing really worse. Like nothing really worth saying to him. There. It's just like, look, I understand you're frustrated and upset, but hey, we we're making team. We're making transactions to win. You're gonna be a good depth piece in the playoffs in case someone falters. So, um, I mean, we're winning games. We're scoring a lot of goals. I think we improved defensively. We have the goaltending to bail us out, and that just makes for good playoff success. And our AHL team is doing really well too, which is always, always a good thing. So let's go ahead and let's see. Fiddler is happy. Um, things seem to be going nicely for us. And Goligoski is also happy, so uh, he's good friends with uh, Henrik Zidane's come in and been, you know, fairly well liked in the locker room, which is always a good thing bringing in guys who are well liked and mesh in pretty easily. This little bit of a losing spree isn't too worrying, um, and we're overall just in pretty solid shoes here. So uh, let's go WHL defenseman for three weeks and kind of see. See how things go. So in WHL for defensemen, uh, guys that are going to be looked at this year, obviously like Jake Bean, he's you know top of top of the list there. So Bean is pretty good. I'd say like realistic tiers. He's probably you know him, Sergachev are are two really elite defensemen, and Chikrin's still the cream of the crop for me. But yeah, team management is definitely something I'm not worried about. Thank you, Russo. And no concerns from Jamie Ben, who's up to 96 overall. Dad elite. There are times where I don't want to talk or don't want to walk into that room. Well, too bad because you're gonna have to walk into that room more. You have to step up and be a leader for the team. 
All right, so we're not going to finish the year with 50 wins, but we're going to finish the year with a lot of points. Our AHL team with an equally good record. So um, we finished second in the, in the conference, which is er, second in the league, second with 106 points this year. Or second, so pro second in the central division, which means we're probably going to be second in the league. No, we're not even second in the well, Leafs. Where the heck did the Leafs come from? Holy cow. Uh -huh. Wow, Winnipeg, 109 points. Ottawa, 106. Dallas Stars, 104. Arizona made the playoffs. Um, any like major misses? Carolina miss. Uh, Colorado, Chicago miss. LA made it. Um, there's some, you know, like Boston missing, San Jose missing. Uh, Florida just missed, but yeah, overall, you know, I think we're we're in good shoes. <laughs> The 10th best team in the West made the playoffs. That that sucks for these two teams right here. Because, you know, when you have your entire division, that that's just bad luck. But uh, So we're going to be facing the Nashville Predators in our first round matchup. And then if we win, we move on to face Winnipeg. So we're probably going to have like a mini cup final very early on. If we do well. So... This will be interesting. I, Jamie Ben almost with 100 points. Uh, Henrik Sedin with 64. That's pretty solid. Um, Tyler Sagan just lit it up. I'm really happy with that production from him. And yeah, so let's go ahead and let's look at the entire league here. I'm sure Sagan let it. Oh, Sagan let it <laughs> easily. Sagan and Ben easily above everyone else. Uh, goal wise, he's above everyone else. So Sagan's going to get a lot of hardware this year. Let's see, who is the best plus minus player? I know plus minus isn't great, but uh, let's see if it rings true. I don't know if you have true, if you have like on ice, but Sagan, like, look at that list, man. Most of the guys with like high plus minus are on winning teams or on teams or they have high shooting percentage. And then guys with low shooting or low plus minus, guess what? Lower shooting percentage, probably lower on ice shooting percentage, and also on bad teams. So, uh, kind of a little true to the game, which is interesting. Who led the league in shots this year? It's always good to look at who leads the league in shots in case you want to like upgrade in, in a future year. So like, you know, you have your your typical cast of guys in the top, and then you kind of look, you know, like Thomas Vax, a guy who's always got a lot of shots. But a guy like Jeff Skinner um, is a good look. Is a guy to get a good look at. Like Mike Camilleri is another guy. Joffrey Lupul, lots of shots again. Always a guy to get a good look at. Um, Kyle Poso, again. Just a good fit there. Uh, overall, though, you know what? Pretty happy with this team. I think we're going to do well in the playoffs. So um, let's go ahead. And we might as well get the first round in. Uh, I think it'll be worth it. So let's see the next game here. And let's see what the lineup's going to look like. Uh, let's hold a team meeting. And I think everyone's going to be pretty happy here. Uh, we have to be the big picture. And keep your eyes on the prize. we got a lot of guys who want to win. This is the year to do it. And so, well, we got one shot, one opportunity. I think line wise, going into the playoffs with this. Um, yeah, I can't say I'm I'm upset over this. So, uh, defensively, again, can't say I'm upset over this. And then we just need to make sure that he's starting. Jakob Markstrom's an 83 overall, so we got the good backup in there. And let's go ahead and let's get things underway. So we're facing the Nashville Predators. Have on ice. Ryan Johansson versus Cody Eakin off the opening draw. Nashville's going to get the opening goal. Jackman's going to get the next one. And it's going to finish off with taking a 4-1 loss. We outshot them pretty badly. So nothing too really concerning to worry about. Um, do we need to hold a team meeting? Nah, I think we're okay. I think the team's going to be okay. So let's sim the first period here. And 1-1. One, one. Who got the goals? Ben and Fisher. So Ben's going to answer back. Let's sim the second period. Nothing going on there. And let's go ahead and let's resume. So let's see if we can uh, add in some really good talent here. Or like we added in some good talent. See if the talent can pay off for us in this game. And... I think, you know, shot-wise, all right, we're getting outshot a little bit, but again, these are two fairly evenly matched teams. They have a stronger defensive core. We have the stronger forward core. 
So it's just going to be interesting. Let's see if we can win this in overtime. We do not want to go to Nashville down 2-0. And Shea Weber's going to blast one home on Roberto Luongo. We're going to go down 2-1 in the series. So we're going to send to the next game and shuffle up the lineup a little bit. I think it'll be worth shuffling up the lineup a little bit. Uh, maybe moving Henrik Sedin up to the first line. Patrick Sharp down to the second line. Uh, let's move Henrik Sedin to center here. Uh, let's bring in Hemsky over Richie because I think we need that little bit of offensive flair. And instead of Sevier, we're actually going to bring in Richie as well over Sevier. So that'll give us just a little bit of offensive flair. Which I do think we will need. And we have a strong top six. I think we're going to be good here defensively. Uh, Goligoski. I think everyone's finding their current role. So nothing really to worry about. And goalies. Yep. I think we're okay. So let's go ahead. Let's hold the, let's hold the team meeting. And hopefully things work out here. Um. We need to play smart, avoid costly mistakes. We can pull this out. Uh, do, do, do. I think it's. I think that's just the correct answer because you know we can pull this out. We're a good team. We played well in the regular season. We played hard, and I think this is just going to be a good situation for us. So let's go ahead and let's sim the first period. Let's see what we're looking at. So we dominated that period, man. They're getting held in some by some pretty good goaltending, but there we go. The goals came in a hurry. Oof. Talk about getting your score in for one for one game. Where are the final where are the final shots? They were like insane. What about shot summary? Yeah, 44 to 18. We outshot we pretty much outshot them or even their shots after one period as they got in the entire game. So we stepped up big. This team seems to fire better when Henrik Steen's on that top line in the middle. Because look at look at the production. Each one of them had three points. They had six, six, and five shots each, so that's that's just really good. I, I you, you can't say anything else. That's just really, really good production. So um, let's see the next game. That's the team I want to see in this playoffs. That's the team we're gonna see in this playoffs, and hopefully they can pull things through for us. Um, let's do let's do some Russian league scouting. We'll do forwards for like three weeks. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and let's sim. And again, same thing. Let's sim the first period. Uh, shots a little bit more even, but let's go to the next period. All right, 31 to 13. This team's starting to take over a little bit. We need this to come through again. And hopefully we can get them to come through here. Shots, again, we're still dominating that shot clock. That's what we want to see. That top line is really good, but they're going to get one with Shea Weber. I just, you know, the team's doing well. We're out shooting them. We're probably out playing them pretty badly. So, and there we go. Nachushkin's going to get a big goal for us. Shots are 41 to 19 after regulation. That is massive. Like, we, oh, they're starting things off on the power play. We avoided that bullet. Good job on the PK there. So, we're just massively outplaying. Like, we've doubled their shot totals. Or our shots are climbing at, like, just an absolutely insane rate in this game. And they're going to score an OT. We dominated that game. We lost it, but we dominated. If we go out in the first round, we'll absolutely dominate in a series. I don't think I can be upset. So... There, this is the time where the team needs to, um, the team needs to step up here. So, ah, uh, you shouldn't have that. Uh, we have it. Let's go. Let's go. We have it. We can get this done. We've massively outshot them. We can do this. I have faith in this team. And 18, again, 18 to 7, just absolutely dominating that shot clock. Again, like when you're doubling the team in shots, you should be winning the game uh, most of the time. But hey, it's like a David versus Goliath battle. So uh, I like the factor shooting a lot. I think that's going to be the game right there. 5 1 with half a period left to play. But hey, you never know. It was 4 1 at one point. And we all know what happens 
when it's 4-1 and you're the Toronto Maple Leafs playing the Boston Bruins. But, nah, nothing's going to happen. 5-1 victory for the team. Who got it done for us at home? Again, I'm going to suspect it's that top line. But, uh, Sedin, Spezza, and Sagan all kind of up there. Sagan with a lot of individual shots. I want to make sure our lines are still good, so we'll sum up to the next game. Because I think our team does play better uh, with Sedin on that top line. Yeah, so Henrik Sedin's still on that top line. I like the way the lineup shakes. Shakes down. There's really nothing to get upset about there. And again, I think of uh, no serious house cleaning. Uh, not calling for the heads. History is filled with co huge comebacks. Let's get on ours tonight. I, I really don't want that because that's like really just like, hey, we can do this. They're like, hey, let's be overconfident. I want a nice little medium medium approach. Let's give me that second option right there. Again, it's kind of like, I wish it was more random, but oh well. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's see. So we're down to nothing. Oh, we tied up to two. A little bit more of an even pace game here. So our season's on the line here, but early on, Nechushkin's going to score. That's a big goal for us. Shots are more even this game. It looks like Nashville really wants to close the series, so they don't want this coming back to Dallas. They don't want the game going back to Texas. It'd be a big game seven. Let's see if we can capitalize on the power play. Nothing doing there, so we're still up three to two. Another power play. Time's gonna tick off on the clock, but Vernon Fiddler is gonna get an insurance goal. We're gonna win this game four to two. And you know what? That's pretty solid. So who's gonna get done on Nashville, by the way? Let's see. So Johansson, Gosta, Weber, Forsberg, Sissons, and Neil. So it seems like a pretty usual cast there. Uh, for us, it looks like it's Ben. Jamie Ben, you know, not. Let's go. So Jamie Ben, Patrick Sharp, Roussel, um, Klingberg, Sagan. Yeah, you know, just the, just the good overall even flow of players right now. So I'm happy with the way this team is going. We got this to game seven. We've massively outshot Nashville over the course of the series. There's a few games that are just absolutely insane shot wise. A couple that are closer. One that I think Nashville's only outshot us in one game. And we've just generally speaking taken it to them the rest of this game. All right. Let's go. No serious house clean. Nothing. Just keep it. Keep it on even Neil. Here, even. Yeah, even Neil. There we go. Let's go. So, game seven. Here we go. Let's put the sim on, and we're not even gonna extend. We're not even gonna sim a period. We're just gonna go slowly and see how things shape up. So the shots are fairly even. Looks like it's gonna be a fairly even paced game. We want to get that shot clock ramped in our favor, though. Nashville seems to be putting on a bit of pressure against us, but hey, we have it in us to turn this around. So let's go ahead and let's see what we're looking at. And we got out shot 11 to six there. That is not the type of period we want out of the boys in green. We need them to step up and we need them to deliver right here, right now. The season's on the line. It's a tight defensive game. We have the offense to break through. Hopefully we can do this. Shots are climbing back up for us. That's a good sign. You're still climbing up a little bit. And now it looks like they have a little pressure, but we're heading into the third period. Knotted up at zeros. This is intense as can be. Hopefully, hopefully we can pull through here. I want that big goal. Let's see Sagan. Sagan had an insane year. Let's see if we can continue this on for us. We got the power play. Nothing doing on that. Oh boy, this is scary. We're heading into the final minutes of regulation. Nothing going on here. We're going to overtime. Let's go ahead and let's send this in game and let's see if there's anything that's going to be shaken. So, um, lock position to... We want the we want the computer only Nashville Nashville against Dallas game seven overtime doesn't really get any better than this so let's hop into the game and let's see what's gonna happen I I think my overtime challenge pick right here is going to be Tyler Sagan he's had an insane year for us Henrik Steen wearing number 34 that's a bit of an odd number for him but hey it is what it is. Let's we see what they can pull off here. Alright. So Neil's going to come and get over to Johansson. Uh, again, not really worried there. 
Jeremy Ben's got to get that puck out. We've got to get this puck out against them. We don't want it in. Good play by Sagan. Sagan's up here. All right, so here we go. Here's the money man right here. Tyler Sagan in. Gets a backhand on goal, but stopped by Pecker Rand. Jeremy Ben, great one-timer. Pecker Rand is going to be there. I think we just want the second line coming out there. We're pretty deep as far as forward goals. Let's shorten up our bench a little bit too while we're at it. Let's try to just keep this really, really just nice and short. And oh, big C coming off the puck of rain. Again, flashing the weather there. Stymie us, short side. We're getting the opportunities. We have one shot, one opportunity. This is everything we ever wanted. Mom's spaghetti, all that fun stuff. And all right, Russell. Don't lose this. No cost of turnovers. Nice play in the Chushkin. Over to Shark. Shark's going to take this in on the wing. He's going to get back to Spezza. Over to Demers. Demers is going to get a shot blocked by Click. That was Roman Yossi back there. Shark's going to work down low and try to get the puck back. But Weber's going to feed it up to Smith. Craig Smith working in. Drags around one defender but gets poke checked there. As he was just at the top of the faceoff dot. Spezza spinning back. He's going to get checked by Smith. Smith gets it to Wilson. Wilson's shot gets blocked by it. Looked like that was Demers back there. And now we're going to transition to the offensive zone here. And Chushkin on the attack. He's skating on the right side. The so over Spezza. Spezza in. Shoots. Pad saved by Pekka Ray. Puck in front. Bounces on Ray. He flashes the other again. And another quick shot coming out. Jamie Ben in front of Spezza. Spezza gets stymied again by Rene. Man, this is just offensive pressure in the forefront right now. Uh, let's get this first pairing back out there. We want this absolutely on lock. We want to just dominate the rest of this game. Let's go Golagoski. Nice shot there coming in from Pinder, but it's going to go a little bit wide. Again, Jackman is doing it for him. Mike Fisher, also known as Mike Underwood. Mike Carey Underwood has been shenanigans, all that fun stuff. Um, Rene Bork, is that right? No, that's going to be Chris Borks dumping that puck around. Wilgoski ties it up behind the net. Dangerous pass on the front, but it's going to find Tyler Segan. He's going to get it to John Klingberg. Klingberg is getting this up. He's going to enter in to the offensive zone. Klingberg in. Cuts out wide. Stops at the hash marks. He's going to turn around. Finds Roussel. Roussel's shot on that. Finds the low pad of Rene, but no one can corral the rebound here. And Nashville's going to break out. It's going to be Eric Nystrom on the counter here. Nystrom's over the top. Over to Gossett. Gossett, top of the circle. Out front to the defense. And oh, it's going to be saved in there by Luongo. Luongo with a nice save right there. It looks like it's Potter out there. Eves, Eves on the attack. Potter still going to corral this puck here. Let's see if we can get a face off. We need a face off. We need to get this first line out there. Um, and probably give our defense a bit of a break, but we don't want to change lines right now. It's too dangerous. And. Gossett's going to get this back to Eklund, over to Gossett, shot gets blocked, rebound goes right back to Gossett after being batted out of the air, but again, Luongo's going to turn this aside, Sisson's working in down low, Hodgson, backhand, stop, and rebound is also put aside by Luongo, big saves there coming in from Lou, crowd is shouting in his favor, here comes Anton Roussel, and over the line, Anton Roussel shoots, glove save by Pekka Rene, and we're going to go ahead, and I think we're actually going to find our top line out there with our second defense pairing. So we need to get uh, we need to get a goal. We need to get the pressure out there. I think they have the they do have the advantage on us, but we do have our best face off man out there. So uh, Russell's going to struggle with this. He's going to get in front and pass is just going to miss Tyler Sagan. Unfortunately, that would have been a great a scoring chance. Nice puck work down low. Oh, big C coming in there by Pekka Rene. What a chance set up by Jamie Ben and Tyler Sagan. But Sagan cannot finish it thanks to the great pad save by Pekka Rene. He got that with his baby toe. Good pass cut off there though by uh, Russell. Uh, the players are going to take this in offside. You know what? I think we want our first line to continue this. We're going to make a bit of a risky play here and call a timeout. Our lines are pretty much dead, but we want them to be back in full strength. And we want this team to take it to them. We need our best face off men out there, and that's Henrik Sedin against Ryan Hansen. And he's going to lose this one, unfortunately, but let's see if we can counter this. Because again, this line has generally been outplaying Nashville's line. And Klingberg, that's dangerous. Longo cover this. Good play there from Lou. And again, top line. Let's get them centered back out here. And I was debating running our second pairing there because they might be a little bit better at clearing the puck. But we want Klingberg to be able to skate this puck out of danger if need be. Uh, same with Goligoski. Both of them can skate the puck up. And again, just nice little outlet pass there. Ben working in two on two a second. Ben gets checked off the puck by Yossi, but gets the second. And this is a one knee clapper. That would have been a great way to finish the game. Fortunately, not going to happen. Ooh, costly turnover there by Klingberg, but he's going to get the puck after a great save by Lee. Turning aside, Craig Smith, and now Jamie Ben on the counterattack. Gets over to Henrik Sedin. Henrik 
Looking it back to the point to Goldowski. Goldowski one shoots. Great save by Ray. Great position there for the keeper. And it is going to still be a scoreless tie in a fairly high octane offensive series. Game seven. I mean, it's totally different from the rest of them, but hey, to his echo, it's going to get checked at the line. It's going to be up to Spezza. Spezza looking front. Spezza passes sharp, but sharp misses it. Spezza gets a little bit too cute with the puck there. Probably would have been better off just shooting that himself, but absolutely, absolutely just gets denied there. Uh, Spezza with the puck again. Gets over to Russell. Back down over Spezza. Over to Sharp. In front of the Nutrushkin, but he fans on the shot. And Matias Ekholm is going to break back out. That's to Philip Forsberg. Philip Forsberg. And on the attack. He's at the wall. Behind the net. He cuts out in front. Gets it over. And that's the game winner, folks. Right there. Great play from Philip Forsberg and the Dallas Stars this season. That's a bit of a rough break for the team. What a goaltending duel there, but unfortunately we couldn't get it done. There is one great chance for Tyler Sagan, and he just could not convert. When it matters most, the team fell just a little bit short. Overall, though, one heck of a year from the team, and hey, nothing wrong with losing to a team as good as the um, as the Nashville Predators. We'll see how far they go in the playoffs. Uh, a lot of you gave it your all. Hopefully that will change. Hey, more of you guys next year. I think we got a good season. You guys should be proud of yourself. We did have a good year. So I think they should be proud of themselves. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a rating is very much appreciated. Commentary is going to get a little bit better over the course of the series too. But as always, take it easy. And I'll catch you guys on the flop side.